Today in this video clip what we're going to do is talk about some troubleshooting tips and steps with the H3500 reverse osmosis. Um, what we've got set up here is a typical RO installation underneath the kitchen sink. Um, what I've done for easier access and for shooting the video purposes is extended some of the lines to reach from the air gap hookup, the raw water feed, and the drain so that I can actually set the RO and the storage tank on top of the countertop to give me full access. Uh, most installations you try to keep your lines as short as possible so you have more space underneath the cabinet. But when doing service work it can be hard at times to get access to everything you need. So by extending the lines out this gives you a lot more freedom and maneuverability when servicing the RO. Uh, if at all possible, it's uh, nice to add an additional shutoff here for your raw water supply so you don't have to keep going underneath the sink to manually turn on and off the water supply. In the uh, Hague Reverse Osmosis Owner's Manual and Installation Guide, in the back there's a lot of troubleshooting steps. Um, we'll kind of go through these. This, and I'll try to show you what components to check on the RO versus the problems that you might run into in the field. Uh, the first one listed here is a high product water TDS. The first thing to really do is with your TDS meter uh, check your raw water supply. And here our raw water supply is 310. spigot, our TDS reading is 299. So our product water and our raw water are almost uh, identical in TDS. The first thing that we want to look at is the membrane. The membrane is what actually reduces all the TDS. If your membrane is at the end of its life cycle, it's probably exhausted or fouled and just needs to be replaced. Uh, the replacement membrane comes from Hegg in a sealed package. You want to be very careful not to touch the blue part or the membrane itself. Um, when you open the package you want to make sure you wear latex gloves. The membrane when it's, it's opened sets in the housing this way. And the membrane is just made up of several different layers of material for the filtration. And if this portion gets squeezed, pinched, or damaged in any way, it will interfere with the flow of water through the membrane. So you want to be very careful when handling any membranes. Um, definitely don't let them freeze or get uh, tossed around in the truck. To replace the membrane, you'll want to shut off your feed water supply, shut off your storage tank, and then depressurize the system. Once the system is depressurized, disconnect your feed line into the RO module. You can remove the prolonged contact filter from the clips here. module itself will pop out of the clips. With a small screwdriver, you can remove the uh, existing or used membrane. New membrane, be very careful, as I stated earlier.
can also inspect the housing to make sure there's nothing internal that's damaged or particles that have broken off in the housing. To reinsert the new membrane with the double O-rings going in first. Once the membrane's seated, reinstall the cap. And this just needs to be hand tight. housing back in place, the prolong contact filter, reconnect your feed line, and the small red retaining clip. Once you have the new membrane, you'll still have a storage tank full of water. Um, you'll want to deplete this storage tank Once it's completely drained down, um, it will take four to five hours for the new membrane and the RO to replenish it. You'll want to dump this, that storage tank. Um, once the storage tank fills up again, your TDS rejection rate should be back down to the, the lower usable range. If your higher TDS isn't from the membrane, um, it could possibly be from the carbon post filter if you've just recently done a filter change. The cartridge that's in the uh, carbon post filter is just a, a GAC carbon cartridge. It's uh, filled with granular activated carbon. Uh, this carbon typically has a lot of fines and dust. When rinsing that this uh, post filter, upon replacing it, you'll see some discoloration, some particles, um, and possibly some air. That All of those components will increase a TDS. Um, if you're confident the membrane's in good shape or you put a new one in, after three storage tanks, you still have a high TDS. You may need to replace the carbon post filter again, just due to a, a defect with the, the carbon or the cartridge itself. And or flush three or four more storage tanks to get this completely rinsed up. Um, a way to troubleshoot if a problem is your carbon post filter is to simply just remove it from the RO, install an empty housing, um, run some water through the RO and do a TDS reading to see if your TDS is high or low.